Hello friends. In this video, I will present the publications called Scrolls of Symbolic Thinking. So far, two have been published in paper form. First one is in English and the second one is in Serbian. And I would like to publish the third one in Czech language, as most probably many of you know that I work in three languages and I have videos in English, in Serbian and in Czech language. For now, those scrolls are published in paper form, but in the future I will most probably put online, uh, present online versions on, through my website, symbolicthinking.net, and maybe I will make some translations of these articles. But for now, it's, it is like as yes, it is. So this, is, this video is not about uh, uh, astrological transits and events. Here I would like to present this, which is also my work, and uh, maybe this will not be interesting for all of you, but some will maybe would like to see what is happening and what else is new on um, symbolic thinking platform. So here I will present some my work also. The first volume that is called The Shift of Consciousness in the Time of the Avant-Garde is a collection of articles on avant-garde art, literature and philosophy which appeared in the 20s of the 20th century. And the second volume, the name of this is Cycles and Cyclicism, is in Serbian language, unfortunately, not in English, just one language, but um, we'll see, maybe I will translate some articles, as I said. So here we speak about the cyclical repetition of historical events and cyclical understanding of time in astrology. So I will first here say a few, few words about the first volume. The avant-garde emerged as a result of a major crisis that gripped the world and especially European culture at the beginning of the 20th century. Edmund Husserl, a philosopher, said that crisis was reflected in a multitude of conflicting scientific theories and philosophical systems. Therefore, the lack of unique scientific basis has created the relativism and scientific knowledge of uh, relativism of scientific knowledge and socio-ethical values. So Husserl thought that this relativism of values was the problem of the 20s in the last century, and we can now say that the destruction of all values is the issue of the 20s in this century, as you most probably know. Unlike Husserl, there was also another philosopher, Alexei Losev who believed that at the time, in the avant-garde, some sort of a change in mythology and way of believing happened. And in his Dialectic of Myth, the book of him, he wrote that every science is mythological and emphasized that the basic way of understanding of social and scientific trends was through the sociology of mythology. This was for him the only possible way. And if you follow my videos, you will know that many times I spoke uh, about that, what is happening in our time as ab about the a change of mythology, because actually I accepted this loss of concept. Later, Carl Gustav Jung, psychologist, raised the question of the spirit of the age believing that if we want to study the religions, myths and cultural trends of different countries and peoples of the world, we would have to examine the manifestation of each great archetype. Or we can say also spirit of the age. That's how Jung formulated this. So here in this book, I talk about those philosophers and their work, their theories, and I connect them with avant-garde as they were indeed tightly connected with the works of avant-garde. In this volume, there is also a study dedicated to very original theories of names and languages, which were dealt with by two Russian scientists encouraged by the movement of monks from Athos, the island in Greece where Orthodox people have monasteries. Like this is one spiritual center of Orthodox people. Maybe you know that. And um, there was this dispute that was happening in, at the beginning of the 20th century 
when these monks had a certain idea about the name of God, and then after that, because of the need to to understand the movement, actually two theories, these theories of language appeared. What is interesting is that in the philosophy of language by those two theorists, uh, they explain language as the instrument of self-understanding and one part of avant-garde also understood language in a similar way. There are other articles here that speak about the space and time in the works of avant-garde. And you know when this changes, our understanding of space and time through art or in some other way, then actually there is the shift in the way how we, how we percept the world, the reality, about the perception of the reality. Then some articles here speak about myths of the avant-garde and re-examinate and adapt the this change of the consciousness. Uh, avant-garde, as um, any other time, art in any other time, actually always had uh, their own explanation of myths that were known before, or we can say even archetypes that were known before. That's not something new, but here was explained how avant-garde did that. Also, are some articles here speak about the need of avant-garde to be connected with the East, Eastern part of the world, and of their need to examine the past, ancient past of them, and also to project their visions of the future. And they were even in that time announcing the perception of reality through the fourth and the fifth dimension. And we, you maybe know that now this is quite a big topic. And But I just uh, learned from avant-gardists that it was even um, that, em uh, that emerged even in their time. You know, and only now, 100 years later, a uh, majority of people already know about this concept, different dimensions of reality. Um, yeah, uh, when we now read artistic and philosophical works, works from the beginning of the last century, we have to ask ourselves if something prevented the change in human consciousness during the 20th century? Was that project of avant-garde finished or not? And we have to ask ourselves, is it only now in 21st century that we can fully understand the phenomena that actually artistic and philosophical vision announced 100 years ago? This is one possible way how we can think of this, what they created. Or maybe, uh, we can think of avant-garde and everything that was happening in the, the, at that time as the movement that was completed in the eastern part of the world, especially in Russia, during the 20th century. And maybe now the whole process is going to be rounded off or finished through the changes in mind that will happen in the 100 years later in the western part of the world. Now you would ask why would be that like that? Well, because everything moves from east to the west and it takes time. <laughs> the second volume of the scrolls has four articles. One of the authors shows in his article that no event is unique. It does not happen only once, but it is repeating continuously in time in accord with its cosmic rhythm. Therefore, cycling is the much, this is cyclical understanding of history, is the much sought after law of historical development, which like any other law, enables insights into the future. However, this is quite contrary to modern historical science, which believes that there are no laws in the course of history, and they now explain history as some sort of chaos, disorder, confusion of historical fragments. And therefore, according to contemporary historians, it's not possible to predict the future. But in this, his articles, we see that that's possible, which is fantastic. Uh, here it was presented uh, how actually a Serbian state was changed through the history in in, uh, in, in certain rhythms that are predictable. 
two authors of the article, one article here, show that um, changes in uh, uh, changes of the borders and in, inside of the state of country of Serbs were always happening, uh, happening and repeating in accord with the Saturn transits and conjunction of Uranus and the North Node. North Node is Rahu in Indian terminology. In accordance with the studies of Mircea Eliade, we can say that Serbian state, like everything else in this world that exists, exists in accordance with a certain pattern that was created in illo tempore, as uh, Eliade would say, that means in ancient and mythological time, we don't know when because we cannot locate it in any certain time. And we know that this pattern will continue to exist in one form or the other always until the end of the world, we can say. Another article here explains epic poetry of Serbs. And it actually discovers that epic poetry contains numerous codes. Those codes are hidden <coughs> in the names of heroes and in the numbers that are used numbers of years or hours. And then it is possible, as it was presented here, to decode these uh, codes and in that way to discover a rhythmic alternation of positive and negative periods in the history of Serbian people. So this, this article is quite, um, uh, quite interesting and uh, maybe the, the largest one here, the, the longest one here, pardon. And I don't want to speak in details, but it is possible to see uh, how author presented this, his discoveries if you read the article carefully, which I would recommend. Unfortunately, not in English, but I'm saying one day perhaps I will translate it and put it on the website. Then there is another article that is specially devoted to astrological issues, which could be interesting to the followers of this, um, of this channel, because many of you are here because of astrology. So the article discusses the understanding of time in complex systems through astrology. And astrology belongs to complex systems, does not belong to complicated systems. Some philosophical, spiritual, and astrological schools understand time linearly and others cyclically. Nevertheless, it is certain that the cyclical and spiral, cyclical spiral actually, we should say, understanding of time is more universal and that is immanent to human being. And also it is clear from this article that spiritual astrology that accepts the concept of reincarnation also can be understood through the concept of self-knowledge or self-discovery self to say and then actually to be understood cyclically in accordance with the, this concept of cycles. Um, we can expect that in the future, this cyclical understanding of time will become primarily and that our organization of life will also be in accord with this new paradigm. This understanding of time is archaic, but it's, it will be new for us. It actually already started and it is not going only to be about that how we understand spiritual life and history this new concept of time will influence now our everyday life and everything that we do. So let's see how that will happen. That is all for now that I wanted to say in this short presentation. As always, if you want, you can find all, all of the contacts and some recommended videos under this video on YouTube. Feel free to schedule personal consultations with me based on astrology, astropsychology, spiritual astrology, theta healing, feng shui and everything that I do. What do I do? You will find on my web pages. Uh, this, the name of the site is symbolicthinking.net. If you like these videos, then please share it. Sign up for my channel and thank you very, very much for that in advance. Wish you everything uh, nice. Wish you happiness and joy and 
looking forward to see you soon in some other video.